Hello everybody and welcome to a very important video from Mile Travel because this video is about the reviews of all of the bars on board the Morena Voyager. Alcohol, our favourite subject. Very important. <laughs> so last time, this was our second cruise with Morella and on the first cruise we paid for premium which currently costs £90 for six days. Now after our first cruise we advised don't go premium. We don't think it's worth it. The all-inclusive package was brilliant. So on this cruise, we went all-inclusive. And at the end of the video, we will be showing you whether we still agree uh, that that was the right decision. Okay then, Mikey, let's get started with our first venue on the Miranda Voyager, which is the Flutes Champagne Bar. Flutes is situated on decks five and six. Um, and I have to say, we didn't use flutes a lot, did we? Because it's no. primarily a Prosecco and champagne and wine. I think, though, I think, don't quote me this, it does serve as a bar. But I think, like you said, it's primarily um, that gimmick around champagne and, and Prosecco. Yeah. But they had the, the, the refill my champagne glass buttons, didn't they? Which yeah, cool I think gimmick. because it's on two decks, it was quite a big staircase down mm. from deck six to deck five where the yeah. bar is. But there are all around the Flutes bar, there are these bring me bubbles, I think it says, doesn't it? There is. And I'm pretty sure, because it's got a piano in it, they do hold um, some sort of light music. But I never saw it. Personally. Yeah, I think we saw uh, Lana there once. She then once. once. Yeah, once. And so it was quite nice. I think it was quite... It's, I mean, it's a beautiful um, bar, isn't it? It's very nicely... It's very, very well appointed. Yeah, it's very well appointed. And of course, uh, as you watched out of the videos, we spent the uh, remainder of our last day in flutes because they had comfy chairs as yeah, well. Yeah, it was very comfy. So we'll show you the drinks menu for flutes. And you can see on there what is included in the all-inclusive and what is premium. So of course the Flutes is a great um, venue but unfortunately it only opens at 5 o'clock till 10 p.m. because it is a pre-drinks um, to your dinner or a post-drinks after your dinner. But talking of another bar, one floor up on deck six, we have another bar which is the Arts House and this bar is a day drinking bar it opens at 11 o'clock and closes at midnight midnight so pretty much all day there now on the approach to art house you've got a corridor each side on one side you've got shuffleboard and on the other side you've got a craft area that they use for activities mm -hmm. but the art house itself is quite a colorful bar isn't it we used it a fair I amount i love the art house the art house is great because it's that walk through so when you're finishing the theater or you're going to the theater you always have to go through the art house it's like the main sort of bar even more than the main bar i said in the squid nanka because that's at the back so this venue holds a lot it holds like you said the crafting area it holds the shuffleboard on the other side and it hosts live music doesn't it yeah it hosts live music most nights and of course, what I liked about the Arts House is it, was, it wasn't it was very often you got a drink served to you at mm. your table, mm. but they had got waiters coming round in the Arts House uh, taking drink orders from you, which, mm. which helped a great deal. And that was quite rare around this ship. So even though it is one of the main bars, um, you can always find yourself a seat. Make sure you head over to the Arts House. Mike will pop up the menu now. Well, also on deck six, you have the coffee port. And we're going to include the coffee port in this because they do obviously sell alcohol um, there and, and they do sort of the speciality coffees. Yeah, didn't our friends Mark and Jack, they had a speciality and one of those was a pumpkin spice latte and you could have, I think it was amaretto or some sort of um, liquor in that as well to yeah. make it a bit more special. Yeah, and it opens pretty much all day. Uh, 7 a.m. till 10 p.m.? Yes, it was. early. It's one of the earliest bars on the ship that opens. Um, 
you're not really going there for alcohol to be fair though they'll probably just do your coffee with alcohol in it but you probably could get an alcohol drink if you want to yeah and it's a really nice uh, area isn't it and of course there is a games area there where you can do jigsaws or play play games such as trivial pursuit or like me if you want to chill out then that's a great place to go because it's quieter you can do a bit of people watching walking through because it's midship a uh, nice nice venue yeah and i have to say i love lovats of coffee anyway so <laughs> And they can make a coffee. Yeah. That's the same one thing because a lot of baristas can't. They certainly could. Put a tea Maria in it and it's even better. <laughs> okay, so on the subject of drinks, let's not forget that when you go to the theatre at night time, they do have a selection of drinks there for you. Um, it's very limited. You've got a few different types of beers in cans. You've got a couple of pre-made cocktails up there and some juices uh, and a couple of wines. Yeah. Not much, but it serves a purpose. So if you want to drink before you sit down, you can grab them from there. And let's also look now on deck seven. Oh, yeah. Uh, so yep. deck seven, we'll start with aperitif. Aperitif bar, yes. Now that primarily is a gin and whiskey, whiskey bar. bar. It's got a really nice aesthetic though. It has. It's it's very very nicely done, and but it's designed as a pre drinks bar yeah. to the two restaurants that are alongside it, which are the Steakhouse, uh, Ste Corolla. Corolla, and what's the name Surf of the Steakhouse? Surf and Turf. Yes. So they are situated alongside those bars. Great um, aesthetic in there. Really yeah. posh looking, and you can get all your other drinks you want from um, that but aperitif bar as well. But they think they specialise in nice gins and nice whiskies. Well, let's show them the menu. Let's do that. Now, if you are looking for more lively of a time or a drink, you can pass through um, with the Plata restaurant on your left and you will come through to the Squid and Anchor. Now, this is the situation on deck seven. Um, this gets very busy and a lot of things happen in this bar. And the opening hours are 3 p.m. till 1 a.m. in the morning. So, mm. again, it's open quite a few hours. And, of course, most of the activities take part in that, do. you know, in the Squid and Anchor. You've got game shows quizzes you've got karaoke band jam so it's a really good lively place in the evening yeah. and they usually have the bigger bands there so and if i'm not mistaken as well they sell all of the drinks so some bars don't do certain drinks i think they sell everything at the squid and anchor but of course the bar does get quite busy in there mm -hmm. so be prepared that you might have to wait a bit at the bar for a drink but one good thing about this bar though um for those smokers out there it's got on the aft um you've got an outdoor section for smoking, so you can have a drink and a cigarette. Uh, not that we do that anymore. Um, but I'm not. I can't remember if Discovery even had that. I don't think it did. I think it only. No, there were smoking areas, Explorer. but I don't think they had any smoking it areas. It was to the side, the wasn't bars, it? Yeah, yeah. So, so only on Explorer and Voyager you get this um, sort of type of sort of smoking area, and it's quite a nice area. <laughs> yeah, don't have to smoke. Now, next up, we have one, well, not one of my favourites, the favourite bar of mine um, on ship, which is The Exchange. Now, the reason why this bar is so stunning is because the aesthetic is absolute luxury. The drink selection in here, if you're on the premium, which is free for, is beautiful. However, you can still get normal drinks there, can't you? Yeah, of course, and it's on deck eight. Mm -hmm. oh, and, okay. Yeah, and we should just say, though, that it is a really nice bar to, to go in. It's been done out lovely, hasn't it? It's like a 30s speakeasy with a lot of Art Deco features in there. Um, but the menu does only feature premium drinks. It does, yes. Um, I can't remember the open time. Is it 5 o'clock? No, it's 6 p.m. till midnight. till midnight. But you can't go in there um, when they've got a show on. And I think they do a show, is it twice a week? No, I think they've upped it to four times a week now. That's a lot. It's worth it, though, yeah. because at the end of the day, we think that's great. But that's a different video altogether. Um, just remember, guys, that this is like a horseshoe bar. Um, it opens on one end and exits on the other end. Um, and, yeah. And, of course, don't forget in there, you've got telephones all the way around that you can pick up and order your drink on there. And uh, that was a nice feature, wasn't it? There? It is, yes, it is. The only problem with it is the toilets are nowhere near the bar. 
Das ist nicht der Luke, aber ich gehe Now, if you like a bit of an alfresco drink, um, you can head to the pool area, um, which is on deck... 11. 11, thank you very much, Michael. Uh, and on deck 11, you'll find the pool bar as well. And the pool bar is a very big spacey bar. You can sit on one side or you queue on the other. They sell a whole range of different cocktails and drinks and beers. And they also have, around the ship, um, on the top deck and the pool deck, they have these big bins full of like lagers and stuff on ice that you can just pick up and take with you. I will just say, and I know I'm going up a floor probably a bit premature, but just above on deck 12, up a short staircase, you've got the shack bar. Now, the shack bar is only open 12 midday till 7 p.m. But when the pool is busy and the pool bar is exceptionally busy, nip up those stairs, go to the shack, and it's often quieter and you can get a drink much quicker. It is, and I just have to quickly relay that the pool bar is open 10 a.m. till 10 p.m. So if you're out there at night time and you want to watch the film on the big screen, you can also pop to that bar as well. And, of course, when they have sail waves, sailor waves and stuff. Oh, it's a great place, And the parties, yeah. it's yeah. a good bar to get your drinks from. Now, if the pool area is not for you, you can always walk through the kitchens where you will find at specific times they will have wine and beer on draft and walk through the kitchens to the back of the ship and you will find the summer house. I keep saying glass house, so I have to think about that. The summer house. We love the summer house, didn't we? Oh, I do. The yeah. summer house was definitely our go-to place. Most nights after the show, uh, we used to go up to the summer house and we liked... Um, there's two sort of parts to the summer house, isn't yeah. there? I should just say it's open from 10 a.m. till yep. midnight. midnight. Yep. So it's open most of the day, uh, but they've got the back, which opens up. Yeah, so they've got an open air bar at the back. Yeah. Um, you go through the doors out onto the after the ship. You've got open area, an open air area there where they have their own bar and you can get some lovely drinks. Same barman working both bars, uh, but you can sit al fresco while you're drinking the night away. And that's where we used to go. And then when we were, there was a band playing, um, we, we would then go into the summer house, uh, find a seat and enjoy the band. And it was just a really nice, calmer... Yeah. I think the aesthetic's a lot more chilled out there. Yeah. Big furniture, yeah. um, very yeah. much like a greenhouse or like a conservatory. I, that's probably better. Yeah, it was just, a, a, for us, a more relaxing, calmer place. And the bands in there were brilliant. Mm. So, so, yeah, good place. One of place. our Now, the most important bar on the ship, and that is the Electric Rooms. Now, the reason why I say it's the most important bar on the ship is because it houses not only the nightclub, it houses the casino as well. So if you're into a bit of a flutter or a dance, this is the bar for you. Yeah, if you like to party like we do, this is the place to go and it's open. I'm surprised it opens early at 5 p.m. and then doesn't close till 2 o'clock in the morning. But if you like dancing, if you like your music, then it's a great place to go and it's there's all neon signs and it's great as well because it's got a seating area at the back of it and they do do table service there as well so there's some waiters that bring the drinks to you so if you want to chill out a little bit between the casino and the nightclub you've got the seating area as well which is quite a nice place to go we had a couple of really fun good nights in there didn't we so and the service was it was busy wasn't it particularly on the silent disco i didn't try many drinks so i stuck to my vodka lemonade yeah. so i should have tried so next time I shall be going and trying a lot more drinks than what I did. But as per all the other bars, we'll show you the drinks menu now. So in review, all of the bars, which there are plenty of them on the ship, um, are a good standard. However, one of the gripes that I had, Mike, um, and I've said this in other videos, is the fact that they over alcohol the drinks. Now, by that I mean, if you're having a cocktail, for me, I like to taste alcohol, but not too much. 
and they were just like white spirits. They tasted so strong of alcohol. So we tended to, to get virgin cocktails and add our own um, shots in so we could control the amount of alcohol that we were putting in. So for me, I wouldn't go premium because a lot of the um, expensive exclusive drinks on the premium like that are still heavily loaded with alcohol. So you're not really getting the taste from them. So for me, I'd rather stay um, non-premium and just make the drinks myself. But what, what, what's your view? Well, we sort of decided after our first cruise with Morella that the all-inclusive drinks, there was such a good selection that what did we need that was on the premium? And I think I would only say go premium. I mean, firstly, you've seen all the menus, so you can be able to work out how much, if there's a particular drink that isn't on the all-inclusive that you like, then you can work out roughly how much you know you would have to spend to have that and whether it premium would be worth it for you we certainly found that we tended to drink the same drinks all the time there is such a good selection um that you we just don't see the need for the premium unless you can only drink one drink see for me um in this country i've always found a bottle beer more premium than a pint but on morella um on the the cruise ships the pints are the premium and the bottles aren't so you can get some really good brands like Bira Moretti, um, Peroni um, on the standard all-inclusive, but yet to have those in pints, then you have to be all in, um, premium. Sorry. So for us, it didn't make sense. I think that drinks are more premium in a bottle, so I'd rather stick with that. Um, and also, if I was able to do this, I would probably, um, if I'm not for the cruise before, just buy the premium for the second half of my cruise so I could enjoy um, the all-inclusive drinks and then enjoy the premium ones on the second half because there are better wine options on the premium. Did we say the price for premium? Oh, we did at the beginning, yes. It was so £90. So it was £90 pound for week. six nights. Yeah. And I think we got it the first cruise we went on with Morella, mainly because we wanted to try, there was more choice of cocktails, but I think we discounted that because the cocktails were so alcohol overloaded that we just didn't like them that much, did we? And the other reason that we got the premium was because we love our coffees. And so we thought we would be having a lot of coffee. But we found that you could get coffee at all of the bars. Mm. And okay, you couldn't get the expensive sort of, what what's the word I'm looking for? The alcoholic ones. Yeah, the, the speciality um alcoholic ones like you know your tea maria coffees your um irish your baileys all that sort of stuff in your coffees uh, your royales yeah. um but you can still get your cappuccinos and that sort of stuff which are still if i'm not mistaken lavazza i yeah. think at any of the bars yeah so it's not really worth no. it so w- this time we that's the only thing i think that we spent that we spent extra was we had the occasional nice speciality coffee yeah. and i think it was two pound fifty with the alcohol in it and £1.75 without alcohol. And we sort of only spent a fraction of what we'd have spent if we'd have upgraded to premium. So I think for everybody watching, the best thing to do is to tot up whether you would be constantly drinking those um, or, um, sorry, premium drinks or whether you just have them now and then. And it probably is going to work out cheaper than £90 per week to just pay for what you have as you go. Yeah, I think it's a real pity that on our first cruise, you used to be able to get a little booklet with all the drink prices in it. And now it's a lot more complicated to find the prices. So this was the little book that you used to be able to get. And it had all of the prices and drinks in there and clearly marked what was premium and what was special, um, all inclusive. But I asked for one of these on the Voyager and there was none anywhere. So it appears now that you have to either look at the menus in the bars themselves or you have to go on the Navigate app and see them on there, which I find a little bit more awkward than just having them all in a book that you could look at. Yes, so if you are someone of an older generation that you do not have a smartphone, it may be worth your while because they have a lot of scan the um, QR code um, for the menu um, areas on the ship as well. Okay, guys, so that completes our video. If you have any comments or questions, please pop them below. We always answer them, so, you know, you will get an answer from us. Um, we hope you've enjoyed this. On recap, we think that the um, the all-inclusive menu is enough um, for you to, to, to experiment on your first, second, or third cruise. You don't need to pay for the all, um, for, sorry, for the premium. You can just pay as you go. Um, 
the bars on board Miranda Voyager, you got it right. They're really good. The service was good. They were always clean and really well appointed. So it's a thumbs up from us again. Um, so that's the end of our video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please comment, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it. Get them all to subscribe. Happy days. I hate the word subscribe, though. It just means that you follow us. Right. Thanks for watching, guys. And we will still have some more videos to come of our time on Morana Voyager. We've still got the what we liked and didn't like to come. We've also got another ship tour. We're going to do another ship tour, this time with commentary. And we're also going to do Morella Discovery 2 versus yeah. Morella Voyager and together. compare the two and see which one yes. we like the best. So I hope you'll come back and catch those with us. Yeah, and we'll see you soon, guys. Thank Bye. you very much. Thanks for watching.